Hello everyone, hope you're having the most awesome day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss even more restaurants featured on the UK version of Kitchen Nightmares and review how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. La Lanterna In a Kitchen Nightmares episode, Gordon Ramsay heads over to the failing La Lanterna to rescue it from closure. Owned by chef Alexander Scott, he purchased the restaurant years ago after being inspired by childhood Italian holidays. Unfortunately, due to a lack of customers, he was forced to remortgage his house and is currently £180,000 in debt, which is why he reached out to Ramsay for some aid. Upon his eventual arrival, the famous chef meets with Scott, who informs him that only two people work in the kitchen. Taking a look around, Ramsay is unimpressed with the awful 1980s style plastic Italian restaurant decor. Already left with a bad first impression, the Kitchen Nightmares host sits down to order some food. After getting some broken pre-packaged breadsticks, he orders a collection of staple Italian dishes. Ordering a minestrone soup that was oily and greasy, an Italian sausage dish that looked like two poodle genitals doused in parsley, and an amaretto cake that was still frozen in the middle, Ramsay was let down even further. Heading into the kitchen to give his feedback, Ramsay expresses that the restaurant's aesthetic is outdated and that the food is terrible and inauthentic. Inspecting around, the famous chef notices that the floor hasn't been cleaned in a while, that the equipment is filthy, and that their storage is filled with old food. Having a brief conversation with sous chef Aldana, she admits to Ramsay that she doesn't actually cook and only uses the microwave. Walking out from sheer irritation, Ramsay notices that the owner's car has a custom number plate on it that's spelt A1 Chef, which makes him irate. Leaving and returning the following day, the famous chef attempts to observe the dinner service, which is disastrous. Not only is Chef Scott wired on Red Bull and not cooking properly, he states that he'd rather be playing golf than do prep for the restaurant. Things really aren't any better in the dining room, with the host Gavin seeming completely clueless. Hilariously, the owner claims that he was trained by a well-respected chef in the area, so Ramsay decides to pay him a visit. Meeting with Chef Mario, who's currently a taxi driver, he indeed confirms that he trained Scott back in the day. With this in mind, Ramsay decides to help the owner develop his own identity rather than rely on the second-hand knowledge of Mario. Before that, the famous chef has a chat with Scott, who reveals that he hasn't paid himself in over 4 months, but spent £46,000 on a BMW 2 weeks into running his business. Due to the fact that he no longer had any money, Ramsay encourages him to sell the car so he can take what he earns and put it towards getting better equipment. Once they listed it online, Ramsay called some celebrity chefs to try and sell the A1 Chef number plates, but it was a complete bust. Later on, the famous chef hosts a little challenge, getting the restaurant's chefs to make a pizza, with the best one getting a spot on the menu. Rather than have the Kitchen Nightmares host be the one to judge, Ramsay gets people from the street to test the food and cast their votes. This episode's challenge is quite infamous, since a vegetarian entered the restaurant and tried a quote-unquote vegetarian pizza, which actually had some meat on it. To add insult to injury, Ramsay laughed in the person's face, which is a moment he's gotten some flack for. Anyway, Aldona ends up winning the competition, securing a spot on the menu, and since the menu was far too large, Ramsay cut it in half. For the upcoming service, the famous chef gets the owner to implement the shortened menu, excited to see how things will go. Sadly, due to Gavin's incompetence, he let way too many people get into the restaurant at the same time, which overwhelmed the kitchen and led to a disastrous service. Confronting Gavin soon after, Ramsay brings him to a field, no, not to kill him, but to set him straight. Hoping to also wake the owner up, the Kitchen Nightmares host brings him to a 12-year-old restaurant that has thrived thanks to its simple and fresh Italian meals. Fast forward to near the end of the episode, after Ramsay got everyone on the same page and redecorated the dining room, the restaurant's future was looking bright. Overall, the relaunch was a success with the customers praising the food but complaining about the wait times. Post Kitchen Nightmares, the owner reported that he was able to clear £20,000 off of his debt and finally started paying himself for the first time ever. He also mentioned to the press that he was making making close to £4,000 a week and was making a profit. Although after only 2 months, this dropped down by 3000 and Scott was forced to file for bankruptcy. Ultimately, La Lanterna shut down close to 10 weeks after the episode aired in July of 2005 and the building was put up for sale. Supposedly, Scott became a car salesman and still hasn't had any luck selling his cheesy nameplates. Would you buy it if you had the chance? The Place for yet another Kitchen Nightmares episode, Gordon Ramsay heads over to Deep Place to bring it back on its feet. Owned by Israel Pons, he opened the cafe slash bar several years ago and was initially met with great success. Having invested £150,000 of his own money into the business, he also got a loan of £250,000 from the National Brewery which meant he had a lot on the line. Sadly, his business went down into the dumps after the first two years and stopped being profitable which is why the owner called out to Ramsay for some guidance. When he finally arrives, he meets with the owner and his 
wife, who revealed that the restaurant's sales have dropped by more than 50%. Since they were desperate to win back customers, the owner employed a wannabe fighter pilot named Philippe Blaise to be the executive chef. He certainly does qualify for the position, having 25 years under his belt, but he isn't exactly used to having three people work under him and barely anyone to cook for. Despite the fact that it was Valentine's Day when Ramsay arrived, only 24 seats were booked that night out of 84, which is awful. Already appalled with how far things have fallen, the famous chef sits down and scans the menu for some food. Ordering a scallop and shrimp cocktail that was rubbery and overcooked, and a creme brulee that was runny, Ramsay was left feeling disappointed. Oddly, a worker named Dave gets into an argument with Chef Blaise about the runny dessert, which is so loud that it can be heard by customers. Heading into the kitchen soon after, the famous chef gives his critique to the staff, highlighting that they have a lot to work on. Leaving and returning the following day, the famous chef observes the lunch service and is offended to see that most of their food is bought in. Almost everything that's served is already prepared, meaning that the cooks only need to heat things up, which is incredibly lazy. Regardless of this fact, the service is still slow and the customers naturally send back their piss poor meals. With the service ending in complete disaster, Ramsay questions the executive chef on his skill level, to which he admits he never cooked this lazily in the past. Later on, the famous chef sits down with the owner to discuss the abysmal situation and the restaurant's incredibly low standards. According to Pons, his business only dropped down to this level because he completely lost his passion. The Kitchen Nightmares host reminds him that he needs to stay strong and step up if he truly wants to bring the restaurant back to life. Hoping to resolve the clear tension between Chef Blaze and David, Ramsay gets the two to talk it out. Following what is a lot of heated conversation, the two finally resolve their personal issues and shake it out, which is a step in the right direction. Soon after, the famous chef reveals that he'll be revamping the menu to include classic French dishes like Croque Monsieur. Justifiably, the owner is skeptical that changing the menu will do anything since his executive chef changed it three times to no avail. To promote communication between staff members, Ramsay does a little team building exercise. Putting the staff into groups of two, he gets one on each team to create a dish while blindfolded while their partner guides them on what to do. Both of them tried to make some guacamole, but to everyone's surprise, Chef Blaze and Dave's team was the winner. After this interesting exercise, the Kitchen Nightmares host makes it clear that they need to continue working in tandem for this rescue to succeed. Of course, before relaunching, Ramsay spent some time with the chefs to ensure that they wouldn't mess up with the new menu he'd be implementing. For the first time in forever, the restaurant was fully booked for lunch since so many people were eager to see the changes made. While the night was pretty rough, with Dave being fired after a heated argument, Ramsay was at least hopeful that they were going in the right direction. Post Kitchen Nightmares, the owner expressed that while he was grateful for the famous chef's help, it was far too late to do any good. Reportedly, Chef Blaze revealed that tons of people were complaining about the new menu, but that it was obvious by the episode that they were going to ultimately fail. Since he was unable to pay back his debts, he sold the business to new owners. Interestingly enough, they decided to give Dave his job back, which is surprising since he was pretty problematic, but he must be doing something right since the place is still open to this day. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one guys.